But are you really a driver? Are you really an owner? Are you really an actual enthusiast or gearhead? Hey, what's up people? All right, so I was watching this and not planning on doing a YouTube video, but truth be told, this is the car that everybody knows me for the most. Uh, this is the car I've had since 2009. I've enjoyed it, put a lot of miles on it, got a lot of history. A lot of you will remember the VinWiki story, uh, as well as the beautiful Petrolicious video. And if you haven't seen those, check them out. Of course, I like Petrolicious and VinWiki, so, you know, I always appreciate patronizing some worthwhile YouTube channels and whatnot. But anyway, um, yeah, this is just my car. And I know that sounds kind of lame. I'm not going to try to puff it up or say anything, you know, crazy about it or make it seem like something it's not. And to be honest, I don't remember, I don't remember how much horsepower they made stock. I don't remember their numbers and specs and figures. I don't remember how many of these were made. I don't really care because it's my car and I drive it and I really enjoy it. Uh, it's fast, it sounds good, it does everything I want to do, and it makes me feel good for driving and owning it. I don't intend to sell it. Um, it's got a bunch of miles, and I don't care in the sense that I don't worry about personalizing it. Because so many of the cars out there that people find value in, the sports cars, classic cars, etc., you can't modify, you can't put a wing on, you don't put stickers on, you don't put on different wheels because it hurt the value. And so when I was out here washing it with a friend, I was thinking to myself, you know, I was saying it's not really worth as much as other ones were because it's mine and I've had it and it's had this crazy history and it's personalized, but I don't care. And he was saying like, if I sold it, he think people would want to keep it the way it is. And I said, no way. The kind of person that would buy this would take all the stuff off, put the old wheels back on, get rid of the pinstriping, everything like that, and try to put it back to dead stock because that's the way it's worth the most. And uh, he said if he had it, he would leave it the way it is. And that was nice of him. Uh, it's a matter of personal taste. But it got me thinking. The kind of collectors that don't enjoy driving a car and putting any miles on, that can't personalize it in any way, you know, if it's tasteful or more, and they just keep it the way it is and don't put any miles on a car, are those really car guys? Because the whole mentality behind ownership in that manner is to keep the value of the vehicle as high as possible which is sort of a bizarre philosophy because what are you saying? Like, if you just keep a car to, because you think it's valuable, right? You're not really an owner. You're this weird, like, flexing caretaker at best for the next person. Are you just holding on to it to hope you beat the appreciation curve or that you can make money? Are you a flipper? Do you, are you just one of those people who keep it in the garage to like, so you can go to a party and act important by saying you have it? That's lame. I mean, are you, you just go to Cars and Coffee once a week and then feel like you're cool because you're around all your buddies? I mean, that's all right, I guess, because you drive it. But are you really a driver? Are you really an owner? Are you really an actual enthusiast or gearhead? I don't really think so. You know, I, I've had cars, frankly, that... I didn't drive much because I knew if I drove and put miles on, they wouldn't be worth as much. And it was important to me that they were worth a bunch because I knew I would probably sell it. And I never, I never enjoyed those cars. I never really enjoyed having them. They never, I never made any really great memories with them. And it's because frankly, I wasn't, I couldn't really afford to have it. Like I had it, but it was worth more to somebody else than me, sadly. I mean, it's worth a lot to me because I love it and I really appreciate it but some idiot puts a number on it that changes my life dramatically and I can go have fun with something else. Uh, you know, that's less money. So I bring that up, it's just a, you know, kind of a real conversation with y'all, especially younger people out there or anybody aspiring to have a cool car, that you gotta enjoy it. You gotta have it because it's what you want. You have it for a long time. If you only buy it because of the value of it, or where it'll be in the future, are you really a car guy? Are you just like a private equity guy flipping businesses? Big deal, what are you doing for the world? You know what I mean? Um, and the other thing that's a bummer about those kind of people, those are the kind of people that frankly sort of destroy the car community and hobby because the cars aren't out, they're not being driven, they don't need to be maintained the same way, so all those other businesses don't really sell as many parts. I had a Porsche part place say that when the, 
prices of Porsches start going up, he sold less parts and it actually hurt his business because people weren't using them as much. And that was pretty lame. Um, I've actually really liked it that Vipers have remained reasonably priced. And I think what kept people away from them is the snobs are like, ew, plastic interiors. I'm so important. I need French stitched leather. Uh -huh. Shut up. Like, get a life. You're just saying that because you suck at driving and you'd probably wreck it because it has no driver aids, <laughs> right? Um, but I, I was just glad that Vipers were a reasonably priced sort of thing. They're going up a little bit now. I hope they don't go crazy. I hope the idiot snobs and the auction speculators and all those jack wagon, like wealth manager, private equity investor type idiots with collections don't suddenly inflate the prices because it just ruins cars. I think Vipers are probably the coolest car out there that is attainable by normal human beings. Um, and I also really like them because they're totally drivable and they can be super reliable if you maintain them. And I also like them because they require some skill to drive. And if you're an idiot, you'll wreck them. Um, and frankly, I think that's the way it should be. <laughs> so I don't know. I just wanted to share this kind of moment and thought with all you car enthusiasts out there. And if anybody has a problem with what I'm saying, um, climb a tree, <laughs> you know, get real. I'm, I'm just a car guy and I enjoy enjoying cars. And uh, it just disappoints me when things happen to the car world that ruin the ability for real people to enjoy cars for the reasons, the good reasons, enjoying driving them, representing culture, personalization, your own, you know, reflection of fun and personality, all the good, you know, uh, attributes of why people like being American. I mean, shoot me if you don't like me for saying that. It's cool to be able to drive a neat car. So. Just wanted to share that. Um, obviously I'm at home. Uh, that, that's my 01 Aston, if you guys wanna check that out real quick. Uh, I was thinking about doing a video on these coming up. Uh, I thought you might enjoy it. I don't really like showing these cars cause these are like my personal cars and it's kind of weird putting it out there on YouTube cause even though I'm basically putting my whole life out there, they're sort of like, I don't, I, don't, I don't have it cause I wanna show it off. But like, if you guys wanna see it, I'll share it. So I was thinking about doing some build stuff with the Viper and the Aston. Um, this one's actually pretty neat. I bought it reasonably, um, actually less than what the average car costs in America. Uh, but it's a V12 stick shift. It's got the six speed Aston Martin uh, DB7 V12 Vantage with the coupe. So it's pretty rare. It's in a beautiful burgundy with a biscuit interior. And I just spent some time making it the way I like it. Uh, I had some custom adjustable shops made in England for the front of it to make it a little better. And uh, I thought if you guys want, I was going to straight, pi straight pipe the exhaust system on a budget. How do you do that? Uh, and that's pretty fun because if it's got a V12 and a six shift, you know, sound the trumpets, right? And that's, that's why you get something like that. So I thought you might enjoy it. Let me know if you guys want to see it. But I um, just wanted to share you one of my super real moments of just being any old car guy washing my car. Uh, and I just um, would uh, throw it out there for you all. Maybe don't worry so much about resale and thinking about stupid investments and crap with cars. Maybe just enjoy cars for getting to drive them and being a real car guy, because that's what it's supposed to all be about. This has given me a lot of good memories. Um, it's been around for life-defining moments. It does not define my life, but it goes along for the ride and it's a compliment. And I hope that you all cars, whatever they may be, um, will be that for you too. So if you enjoy this, I uh, hope you'll share of course, and that you'll like, comment, and naturally subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. I got work to do. <laughs>